Crafty Gemini and in this video tutorial we are kicking off a brand new garment sewing sew along where I'm going to teach you how to make my Westchester Dolman top. Now my Westchester Dolman top is the top that I'm wearing right here. I think it's a nice beginner friendly project and I designed it to be pretty simple, minimal pattern template pieces and we are working, if you notice, with stretch knit. So if you followed my last sew along, we were working with a woven fabric. Now it's time to enter the world of stretchy, more comfy fabrics, okay? So I'm gonna be walking you through every single step in a series of videos posted right here to my YouTube channel. Now, if you wanna stick around for the entire series, it's completely free. I definitely suggest that you click the subscribe button and make sure that you click the little bell icon so you will be notified via email every time I post a new video, okay? So don't forget to do that. Now for the PDF, it's gonna be a free downloadable PDF pattern. I've included a link in the description box below. Click there, it will take you over to my online shop. The pattern is free, but you still need to purchase it. It's gonna take you to a product page that says that the price is $0.00 and you just need to go through the process to check out and buy it for $0.00, okay? If you've never done that before, just try to go through the prompts, enter your information, and you'll have an account then set up on my website where you can always, if six months from now you lose the pattern or it gets messed up or ripped or whatever, you can just log back into your account and re-download it and print it out. So a PDF pattern, this one actually is 20 pages long, so you can find that for free. And in this video, I'm actually gonna show you how to cut, prep, and put all the pages together, all 20 of the pages, so that you can end up with a large full sheet for the pattern template pieces, because it's a pattern for adult women. So you'll notice that the entire front is one pattern piece. So those of you that maybe are a little bit nervous about trying your hands at sewing a top with stretch fabrics, notice this, there are sleeves, of course, but there are no set-in sleeves, meaning there is no seam right here. The whole front, this sleeve to the whole front of the shirt to the other sleeve, is all cut out as one pattern piece. And the same thing goes for the back, so that makes it quicker, faster, and a little bit easier. I think it makes it a little bit more doable for beginners, okay? So you can totally do this if you want to give it a go. So we have a front, a back pattern piece. The sleeves are finished off with sleeve bands. So these are two strips that we cut out and we sew them on. And then the neck band is also finished off with a piece of binding, kind of. It's not wrapped around, but we finish it off as a neck band. And I'm going to walk you through every single step of how to do everything, okay? Including making the hips in the pattern template piece a little bit wider because in my case, based on my measurements, I need to do that. So these are all tips and things that you'll be learning as we go through uh, the sew along on how to make the Westchester Dolman top in a series of videos. So this is just video number one. Have a look, it's just, you know, download the free PDF pattern and how to put it together. Now, if you hate putting PDF patterns together, as do I, we wanted to give some of you another option to purchase some large sheets. Notice this is not tissue paper. It is a large three feet by four foot sheet of white printer paper with all the sizes printed on it. And we're selling these in our online shop. So if you rather spend the money and not spend the time, uh, that's another option for you. Now our online shop is craftygemini.com slash shop. Or you can just head over to my shop, uh, my website at craftygemini.com and you'll see tabs there all over the place for shop. When you click on it, it will take you right to my online shop where you'll find uh, the hard copy pattern. You'll also find the free downloadable pattern where you put the pages together at home as well as some tools, fabrics, and things that we'll actually be using. And of course, fabrics that are good for this top. So this is a double brushed polyester spandex fabric that I'm wearing it in here. And this is my navy lilac, I believe. Um, and currently, as it stands today, we still have some of this fabric in stock. We actually had to restock it because uh, it sold out. So if you like this print or want to check out some other ones, you can head over to the shop. As we go through the sew along, I'll cover different tools and things that kind of come in handy. Uh, some of my must-have tools, some optional tools that will make your life a little bit easier. And we'll kind of just go through the entire process of sewing my Westchester Dolman top. If you're working on the sew along with us, feel free to use the hashtag Westchester Dolman top so we can see what you're working on and what fabrics you've chosen to make this top in as well. 
As for tools in this sew along, I'm going to be working with the double brush polyester spandex fabric. A lot of other knits will work, but if you're not sure on what fabric to buy yet, I would wait until the video where I talk about stretch knits because that will give you a ton of information and then hopefully you'll walk away after watching that video with a better understanding of stretch knits, what, uh, what minimum amount of stretch you'll need along which grain line for this top and things like that. So if you want, you know, just take your time, watch the videos as I put them out. So some of the tools that I will definitely be using are these uh, Crafty Gemini exclusive tools that I had the manufacturer make with my branding on it. So the only place you can get them really is from us and I think they're super cool. They have my logo, uh, my colors on it and everything. This is the curvy ruler and this is like a small French curve. I'm actually going to be using this in the next video after this one where I'm gonna show you how I grade out at the hips. And I'll be using this ruler, the curvy, uh, to shape it out a little bit to make the hip dimension or hip size before I cut it out of fabric in the pattern template piece I make it a little bit bigger and I'll walk you through the steps on how to do that in case that's an adjustment that you too also have to make now this ruler if you are not into pattern drafting or you've never made clothes before or altered patterns it's not really gonna look like anything but as we go along I will use it for different things and I will kind of show you how I use it so these are already in our online shop as well as the Curve Runner. This is another Crafty Gemini exclusive Curve Runner with our colors and our logo on it. And I love this thing, okay? Ever since I discovered it, I had to get with her with the manufacturer lady and tell her that I needed to have this before I launched my sew along. This thing is so handy and everybody that comes to my garment sewing retreats or in-person classes that I teach at, you gotta have this. If you're making neckbands on stretchy knit fabrics, you're going around the curve here, this is basically a circular ruler. It has all the measurements in the round. So when we get to the point, almost to the end, when we get to almost finishing our top, I will show you how to use the curve runner to measure the neckline and then I'll give you the formula that I use so that you can cut out a proper size neckband and attach it so you get a nice neckband that doesn't stand up that lays flat against your body and that all has to do with the proper measuring of it okay so curve runner and my curvy ruler super handy tools some other things that we have are my favorite little clip and slide measuring tape if you're planning to get into making clothes this is absolutely a must-have you'll find this in my online shop as well as with a picture and info on how to use it if you haven't watched me use it in some of my other sewing uh, garment sewing videos check out some of my body measurement videos and you'll see me using this once you make sure that you've printed out all 20 pages of the Westchester Dolman top pattern, double check. And sometimes it's good to just print out page one because that's where our one inch test square is. And I want you to grab a ruler and you need to make sure that this little test square here measures exactly what it says. So that's one inch by one inch. And I can see that it's exactly that size. So I know that the rest of the pages are going to print to scale exactly like I designed it to be. So make sure that your printer settings are set to print at 100%. Do not select fit to page because then you're going to have some problems. But you'll notice that you'll have kind of buffer of extra space outside of the outline of each of the tiles that are printed on a page. And so you'll need to trim away some of the excess so you can overlap them and stick them together to create the whole full size sheet of a pattern. So if you're new to PDF patterns, I'm going to walk you through it. You'll need a paper trimmer of some kind. Uh, paper scissors work well. I often will do it with a rotary cutter also. And then you'll need something to stick the pages together. I like to use uh, a regular paper glue stick, like school glue stick, or tape. We're going to use tape in this case. Once you've printed these out, you're going to want to select top or bottom and then one of the sides. So you're basically going to trim away the exact same sides off every single page. And so what I mean by that is I'm going to choose top, and right side okay you can choose bottom and left side or bottom and right side but it needs to be one of these two edges and one of these two edges and whichever ones you choose you need to trim away those two edges from every single one of these sheets if you switch it up and do the top of one the bottom off one you're not going to be able to overlap them consistently okay so I'm gonna trim off the top of every page and the right edge of every page and I mean just trim away the excess until the line that's there, okay? So if you're doing one by one, just grab one sheet at a time. And we are gonna trim away the top. OK, 
okay, like that, and then the right edge as well. And you want to be precise with this step, otherwise you're going to start then affecting the finished pattern. So you see how I did that? We trimmed off the top and the right edge. I'm going to repeat the exact same steps to the rest of my pages. If you have a paper trimmer, you can do a couple at a time. But if you want to make sure that you're absolutely perfect on it, feel free to do it one at a time. Now we'll take our trim stack and line them up one, two, three, four, five, like this in order. And every page you'll see that there is a number on it. And so that corresponds to the position of where it belongs. Two, three, four, five. So we're gonna lay out the first five. And so now you'll see that because we've trimmed off the top of all of our pages, they meet flush across the top. But because we trimmed away the right side, the left little buffer edge here of the next page, and of course every single page because we didn't trim the left, is still there, there's extra. And that is what allows the trimmed right edge of one previous page to fit and get taped or glued onto the next. So that's why it's important to trim off one top or bottom and one side only because now they all will overlap and they each have the buffer of the next page to get taped onto. So I'll just grab some tape and if you notice, how do I know that it's going right there? Well, first of all, they're gonna be the same height exactly, but you also wanna look for the little matching points. In our pattern here, this one has triangles. So line them up so they meet up and basically make a diamond shape then. And you'll see that all the other lines should be matching for the individual sizes. And we'll put some tape here and here. We'll do that to the next page. Again, page two overlaps on the chunk of paper that remains. They run page three. Line up everything so all your lines match up. one through eight first row and seven and eight you really can just separate them because it's just a sleeve band so that's kind of its own separate chunk so you can set that aside or leave it there it's okay either way will work but just so I can fit more into the camera angle here and then the next row is nine through fourteen which get overlapped with the previous row right here so these guys are gonna get taped or glued into place right here and then I'll continue because we're gonna start another row starting with number 15, 16, which I've already put together here, these guys are gonna get lined up and glued here. So once you tape up the whole thing, you will see that one shape of the top is the back and the other is the front, okay? Then you'll also have pages seven and eight, which make up the sleeve band templates that we'll need for the different sizes, okay? So this is done for now. Let me walk you through what you see on this pattern sheet, since remember, this is my pattern and my video so along, and you all know that what I do is teach via video. So there are no printed PDF instructions for this free pattern, okay? You gotta follow along the videos in the sew along so that you can learn how to put it all together. But there are some, uh, some charts and things that I do think are important that we went ahead and included on the pattern sheet itself. So first you'll see my logo, the name of the top, and the sizes that are included. Size small to 3XL. Now, if you've watched my garment sewing videos and my videos on measurements and how that applies to your body measurements, you'll know that small through extra large doesn't really mean anything unless you have a size chart to reference the sizes to. 
because this does not necessarily mean that if you wear a size small when you go to the store to buy clothes that this small will fit you. Every single pattern company is going to have their own size chart and you'll have to reference that to figure out what size you need to cut out from that pattern. So let's have a look at the size chart that we included here for you. This size chart applies to this pattern and this pattern only, all right? So these are not the finished measurements on the garment. These are based on your body measurements, okay? This is a semi-fitted top uh, by my standards, right? Because that's what I wanted it to be. And so if you like more loose fitting garments, you're probably want to go going, are going to want to size up because otherwise you may find that this shirt fits you too slim. And we'll get into that as we're making the garment and I show you pictures of pattern testers and how the top looks on different bodies. But you're gonna wanna take your bust, waist, and hip measurement and see where on my size chart for this pattern you fall. So for me, I land at the bust between a large and an extra large. At the waist, I'm between a large and an extra large. And at the hips, I measure at the 2XL here. So because it's semi-fitted, Instead of going with a smaller size and having it be way too tight for me on the hips, I cut out the extra large size, and that tends to fit me exactly how I want it to. So you will either have to make one sample garment or estimate how you want it to fit you based on uh, the size chart, all right? So if you fit in one of these sizes, in one of the columns for the sizes exactly, then you know the shirt is gonna fit you just a little bit loose for a semi-fitted look. So if you want it looser than that, size up. If you want it tighter than that, size down. Another chart we've included here is the fabric yardage requirement. So it tells you based on the size, if you cut out that size, how much fabric you'll need at 60 inches width. And the reason I only have 60 inch width up here is because this fabric, or excuse me, this pattern is designed to be used with stretch knit fabrics. So it has to be stretched and most all stretch knit fabrics are, are about 60 inches wide. If it's 56, 57 inches wide, 54, it's still closer to the 60, so still go with that. If it's a little bit less than 56 or 57, I would just estimate higher and just get more yardage, okay? And then for the neckband here, I put to cut one strip at two inches by 45 inches in length. You will not be using the entire length of that strip, but I want you to cut out that size strip so that I can show you when we get to that point in the sew along, how to measure the neckband, how to cut it down to size, and how to stitch up your own neckband. And then here, for those of you that are printing out the free PDF, we have just a quick little step-by-step -step instruction here telling you how to print it out in layers. What layers means is that this pattern, because it's multi-sized in a PDF, you don't have to do what I did here and print out all the sizes. If you know by looking at the size chart and seeing how I've shown you the pictures of how it fits, if you know that you want to cut out the size extra large, you don't have to print out all the other sizes. You can just print out the size extra large. And the instructions on how to do that are included for you here by opening up the PDF document in Adobe PDF and going to where it says print layers. You'll select the size and check off the box of what you need. And then that way you can send it from there to your printer to print out only one, two, three sizes. For me in this case, I just printed out all of them. If you know that you need to grade between sizes, say you're very small busted and have small narrow shoulders, but you know your hips land you at a larger size, then chances are you're gonna wanna print out all the sizes so that you can more easily grade from a small coming out at the waist to something wider and choosing one of the larger sizes at the hip line. Something else to note on this pattern. The seam allowance is already included in here and it's half of an inch. So if you're used to sewing with commercial patterns and sewing 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, that's not going to be the case here. You will end up with a top that's smaller than it was designed to be if you use a larger seam allowance than what I've included here. So you want to make sure that you're using a half of an inch seam allowance when you're uh, constructing this top. And that seam allowance is going to apply for all the seams, shoulder seams, side seams, when you're attaching the sleeve band, and also when we go ahead and attach our neck band. I've also gone ahead and included for you an arrow here signifying that the direction of the greatest stretch of the fabric needs to be going left to right across the body, okay, around your body because this goes around in circumference and we need the direction of the greatest stretch to go left to right around our body. And then you also have a line here for grain line, which of course is parallel to the fold where this 
pattern template piece is going to be placed on the fabric. And we'll get into that once we start making it. But also notice that I've included for you here, there is no PDF step-by-step -step written instructions for this pattern, okay? I'm only providing the step-by-step -step video lessons. And so I have a link here that at any time, if you set the pattern aside and six months later you wanna make it again, this link will take you directly to where you need to be to watch all the step-by-step -step video lessons on how to make this top. And then the last thing I think is important to note is the technical drawing that's been included here for you. The neck bend is not on here because I don't use a neck bend template piece when I'm creating garments, whether from my own patterns or from other store bought ones. Because I'm gonna teach you a formula when we get to that point on how to use the strip of uh, the fabric that we're gonna cut to measure and attach a neck band. So what I have here are just the pattern template pieces, the technical drawings for those, so you see how the top will fit. It's pretty fitted, okay, so I'm calling it semi-fitted because there is a little room in there, but for some people, this might be super fitted, right? So it all depends on the designer and the pattern company. So that's why I'm trying to give you as many uh, tips, tricks, and, and drawings and information so you know how it's gonna fit. So it's pretty slim fitting. It has a silhouette that comes out at the hip, so very hourglass kind of silhouette. In the sleeves, when you look at them, you'll see that they're not hemmed. Instead, there's a separate piece that's sewn on to create a sleeve band. And in the pattern pieces, you'll see that you do have in pages seven and eight, the template piece to create the sleeve, the sleeve bands uh, for the top that you're gonna be making. And of course, we have the sizes included here for you to match up the sleeve band template to the size of the top that you're making. And if you enjoyed this and you wanna follow along with the sew along, don't forget to click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. You can also share it with your friends across the different social media sites. And I will see you in the next video.